uh, in this uh, video of the digital logic what we're going to do is talk about glitches and hazards glitches is when your when your circuit encounters a problem in your circuit uh, and hazard is the problem that already exists in your circuit um, only becomes a glitch when you encounter it so the analogy I have is uh, a road may have a pothole, but if you never drive down that road or you never hit that pothole, it really is not affecting you. So that pothole is the hazard. When you encounter it, that becomes a glitch for you. So that's the same thing for your circuit. In general, we look at glitches in more or less two different ways. And the way we look at it is how many input that does, is it just one input that is changing that caused the problem or is when it's multiple inputs changing that causes the problem. So let's go ahead and start with the case where we have multiple inputs changing at the same time that cause the problem. So these are these are generally we're going to at least here we're going to call them functional hazards. And the functional hazards basically two or more inputs change and um, your output instead of being what you expected it might be something uh, different or could be dynamic but it adds a few uh, changes before it settles down to the correct output so let's take a look at functional hazards first and then talk briefly about whether we can do anything about it and then we move into the other kind of hazard which we'll spend a little bit more time on and those are called logic hazards, okay? And as we mentioned before, each of these could have two kinds. They could have the static or they could have a dynamic. It really depends on uh, whether the output changes multiple times or it just stays constant because it gets one glitch in it. If that's the case, then it's static. If multiple time changes, then it's dynamic, okay? But let's now talk about the function. Let's say, let's say the best way to best way to describe a functional hazard is actually showing a situation where they exist, and then we'll talk about. It. Let's say let's say we have a function that is represented by a uh, a, a Carnot map as is shown here. A, B, and C are the variables, and the variables are set up this way. Okay, and then uh, let's say this is one zero. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And in this particular case, let's say that our inputs are changing from A, A B, C is changing from um, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 1. In this case, okay, if, if all the inputs were changing at the same time, there would be no problem. We would start at location 0, 0, and we would next step would be back to one zero one which puts us right here so we'll go directly from here to here and the user will see a clean high to high output so the function will do that but what if if the inputs did not change at the same time you start at zero 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 with an output of one, but let's say instead of all of them changing at the same time, let's go ahead and say C changes first. That means we're for a moment in time, however short it may be, we will be at zero, zero, 001. And zero, zero, 001 says the output is gonna be zero. Okay, and then as the next step goes to one, zero, 001, which you get a one. So, so the bottom line is when you have a functional hazard, Inputs may change at different rates, and you will get this. So as you can see, um, in this particular case, the problem were caused by inputs changing not all at the same time. We really can't add any circuitry to our star device to fix this problem. But of course, uh, later on, we'll talk about um, flip-flops and synchronization requirements and all that. And we have a way of forcing uh, inputs or tell the whoever is sending us input to make sure 
that the inputs are changing at the same time and one way to do that is through synchronization in other words uh, having a clock uh, uh, that forces everybody to change at the same time so this is one kind unfortunately we can't really do much in our circuit to take care of it is a question a, circ a question of um, um, synchronization let's go ahead and take a look at a different kind of uh, hazard these are lo called logic hazard and the big difference with the logic hazard is that only they're caused when only one input changes okay so let's and then static is when the output stays and is, is the same and it just gets a little pulse dynamic is the case when we will we might get multiple pulses so let's take a look at an example of a logic hazard that might uh, we might encounter let's say we have another uh, function that is described by this two table um, i'm sorry this came up and let's say zero zero one one and then zero one one zero and use our friendly variables a b c zero one zero 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 one 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 zero all right, so we know Carnot map, so we can solve this using Carnot map to find a minimum function. We have a prime implicant here. We have a prime implicant here. There are other prime implicants, but these are the two that are going to be essential, and we need to draw them. So the function simply is going to be a function of A, B, and C, and that would be A, C naught, or B, C. Great. So we got the function then we can implement this function relatively simply by saying, okay, C comes in, A and B, and A and C naught, and then B with C, And all that is all together to give us f so this is a great example simple enough but yet has the issue that causes logic hazards the issue that causes logic hazard it has to do with the fact that um, each of these gates have a certain amount of propagation delay through them they might be the same, they might be different, but that's not the point for each one of them. The point is that if I measure the output with respect to A, it only goes through two gates. If I measure it with respect to C, it actually goes through three gates. So that difference of uh, prop the number of gates they have to go there for the different kind of propagation, different, different levels of propagation can and usually is the cause of the logic hazards. So let's 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 look at this thing. So just remember that this C comes in here, so this would be a C plus coming out of there. So one of the um, good examples of showing logic hazard is let's say my input, I my input is going to let's say we're 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 here where our input A B C is equal to one one zero, and all we want to do we want to go to one one um, one that's all we need to do if only one input is changes so it's not a functional hazard of any sort and so what could go wrong well let's let's take a look at this from a diff from a look at it from a timing diagram anytime you need to show uh, propagation delay or timing some um, values of timing it's good to go to a timing diagram which is basically the horizontal axis is time and we'll plot everything on along that axis so in this case let's say a we'll look at a a is one right one zero a is one and stays one b the same thing b is one and stays one the only thing that changes amongst this thing is c and all c is doing is basically saying c it was one at some point in time goes low and that's it so this is what is given these are the inputs coming in and our expectation was that we are just moving from here to here so our expectation was that the output would stay high all the way through the process right 
But let's look, see what happens. And what is going to happen is that now we have a C naught, or at least what we marked C naught here. And let's take a look at what happens there. As the C comes in, this, there is going to be a finite amount of time, which is the T of propagation through the not gate. It's very, could be very small, probably in the nanosecond rate, but nonetheless is there. It's going to take some time for this to travel here. Notice A and B have no distance to travel, C does. So what does that mean? That basically means that C will be, C, C naught would be low when C is high. And then when C goes low, it's going to take him a certain amount of time before it goes high. So there is the problem. There is, a, there is this piece of time, this period of time here, from here to here, that both C is low and C naught is low. So, so is that really a problem? Well, it is once you implement this function at this point, what you're going to see is that Okay, so I had a high, my F was A, C naught, okay, so A, C naught, that was another word, B, C, yep, that's a high, so my function was high until I arrived here, okay, and then, um, and then at this point, then, um, the C will the C naught the C the C is low but at the same time the C naught is also low which basically what's gonna cause in this particular circuit what's gonna happen is that this is low that means this is gonna be zero this is low which means uh, this is gonna be zero so the whole function, instead of staying high, for that shorter period of time, is going to go low and then come back. When that period is over, it's going to come back and continue on. And this is, this is, the, this is the problem we're going to encounter, where we got this, we've got this extra pulse. This, we got this extra pulse because of the propagation delay. Now, can we fix this? You bet you can fix that. You can fix that by adding a another prime here and if you do that during so that basically means when we add that thing we're just adding a another term which is a b and that would basically eliminate this pulse it takes care of this pulse and with the addition of this so so in the case of a logic as or whether it's dynamic or static it really doesn't matter in the case of that we can fix it Okay, so we talked about functional hazard, and those are because if multiple inputs are changing, we can't do much about it. Then we talked about um, logic hazard that can have statics or dynamic, depending on whether it's a one pulse. This would be a static example that we just finished talking about here. Sometimes these things could bounce, and then we're going to have a dynamic version of this thing. And uh, uh, so, uh, and the, the, the bottom line is for the logic hazard, we are able to fix it by adding an extra term to our equation. It's not minimum, but then doesn't have the hazard either. That brings us to the end of as much as we're going to talk about hazards and glitches.